For those of you who are taking Teaching Workshop 2, I want to spend a few minutes talking about different components or aspects that I would consider whenever you're putting together ideas for your next class. In this example here, I have the following components for a lesson plan. And if you're presenting or if you're used to using a format uh, that you've used in the past for your lesson plan, that's fine. But try to see where the different components that I talk about here today fit into the, the kind of format that you're used to using. So here I have listed the subject, grade level, topic, grammar function, grammar focus, examples of language, key vocabulary, and objective. I also have down here teaching techniques and strategies, learning strategies, the time allocation for the lesson, the teacher, the observer, and the person who is recording the class. Below that I have the rationale, materials, assessment, and then the procedure itself. I have a section here for differentiation, anticipated issues, and then the reflection, which would occur obviously after the class itself, some guiding questions that I would include whenever you're, you're uh, including your reflection of your own class and also reflecting on a, a class that you observed. So starting with the subject, most of you are going to be considering a general English class, but certainly you could also consider other types of English classes like English for specific purposes, maybe content English courses. For example, if it's a math class, a science class that is also being delivered in English, that also could be an, uh, an alternative to a general English class. Could be an academic English course. Uh, maybe it's a writing course and you're talking more academic. But I think for most of us, we're going to be considering a general English class. Now the grade level is going to refer to the age primarily. Um, if you want to indicate first grade, second grade, or just the, the age of the students, then that would go here. Now the topic, think of the topic as the notion or the concept, whether it's abstract or concrete, that relates to your lesson. This is not a language topic. This is a general conceptual topic that will provide context or should provide context to your class. And, and talking about context, I actually don't have a a space for context and, and I, I probably should add that in fact here so if I add a context the the topic and the context relate a lot with each other or they should so the the topic is for example maybe it's friendship maybe it's places maybe it's sports if you're used to using course books a lot of times course books will have the topic presented there at the first page of the of the of the unit or or the the lesson depending on how it's broken down in the scope and sequence but the topic really is the the non linguistic idea that provides context and that provides some kind of uh, related vocabulary that will help learners navigate through the communication of uh, what, what what is intended. So the topic here, you might uh, you might benefit by looking at a notional functional syllabus, looking at different examples of notions and related uh, functions, which we'll talk about here in a, a minute, to get some ideas about what the topic will be for your class. Now the context, think of basically the situation what is the situation of, of your lesson? Think of the situation that relates to a topic. So if the topic is friendship, maybe the, the context would be um, the students are, maybe they're starting a new school and they're trying to meet new friends. And maybe they're, they're shy, maybe they, are, they just are not aware of the school everything's new to them and uh, this is the context again 
There's no mention of language per se. This is just a situation. And think of a, a situation and a topic that is relevant to the students based on their age, based on their interests, their cultural backgrounds. This is where the topic and culture can come together to hopefully provide a, a motivational educative experience for your students. And your decisions here really need to be directed towards the type of student that you're considering. All right, so the context is the uh, relates to the situation. The context could also relate to where the lesson fits into the broader scheme of the scope and sequence. What came first? What were some prior lessons? Where are you going with the lesson that you're planning? What are the objectives, not only for the class itself, the lesson itself, but maybe down the road later, maybe it's for the unit. Uh, I think it's also good to consider where your lesson fits into the, gra the grander scope and sequence. All right, now the grammar function, the grammar function now goes back to the notional functional syllabus. So every notion or topic should have possible functions that relate to that topic. So here we can list the functions. Think of the functions as as a as thinking of a, a verb in the ing. They're describing something, they're asking for directions, they're asking for assistance, maybe they're asking for help, maybe they're um, maybe they're trying to get directions or giving directions, either receiving directions, giving directions. Think of different verbs in the ING that also promote critical thinking, comparing and contrasting, analyzing, synthesizing, creating. Okay, so there are a lot of different verbs in the ING, and I've listed here, there's a link on this page to the six facets of understandings, which categorizes many different performance verbs that you can choose from. So when you're trying to think of a particular gr grammar function, refer to the six facets of understandings to get some ideas. Look at the notional functional syllabus page also to get some additional ideas. Now the next point, grammar fo focus, will now will consider very specific grammatical structures. Notice the difference between grammar function and grammar focus. A grammar focus is going to be maybe related to verb tense. Maybe it's going to be related to certain parts of speech. I've listed some examples here, phrasal verbs, for example, passive voice. So depending on the length of your, your lesson, it's important to list the grammar function not to say that other grammar, related grammar issues might come up, but we want to limit the grammar focus to the particular objective of the class. You could have one lesson, especially if you're talking about a 15-20 minute lesson, or even a, a 50 minute lesson. Maybe you have one grammar focus, passive voice, for example. So that whole class, that whole 50 minute class will be focusing only on passive voice. Now, if other things come up, you certainly could combine certain grammar func uh, focus foci, but you could uh, you could include more than one. But this is to help us zero in on certain types of grammar that we want to provide good feedback that we're going to be looking for whenever we're providing formative assessment, maybe even summative assessment, depending on what kind, how you're assessing your students. But again, notice the difference between grammar focus and a grammar function. Now, examples of language I would include here. These are just certain types of examples that perhaps you're going to write on the board. Maybe you're going to include it in a PowerPoint presentation. But these are different examples that you want to think about and prepare for so that, well, number one, they're correct, depending on the type of language that you're uh, wanting to uh, work on with your students, you want to make sure that the examples are correct. That if you have, like, for example, a passive voice sentence, that you have 
before the class, you've come, you have developed or designed three or four examples that you can use in your class, but you've thought about those and you're not maybe coming up with examples in the moment so that, you know, to try to avoid making any uh, mistakes. Key vocabulary, this is going to be key words or phrases, maybe idiomatic expressions that relate to your topic. Notice here that the key vocabulary, the examples of language, grammar, focus, the grammar function, the context, and the topic need to align. That is, they need to relate to each other. This is all about alignment, making sure that everything fits together as it relates to the lesson that you're planning with your English language learners. Now, the next point, the objective. I'm thinking of the objective, the learning objective. In fact, I might even add learning here. But the learning objective, the idea here is to think of it as an understanding. What is the key understanding of this particular lesson? And if you're focusing, if you're preparing a 15-minute lesson, a very short lesson, right, this key understanding could extend beyond a 15-minute lesson or even a 50-5-0, 50-minute class. It might even extend to a week or even a two-week unit, all right? So think of the learning objective. It could be at the level of a activity, but it could also be more, it could also extend to uh, maybe a week lesson or a series of lessons that extend a unit, maybe a two-week, three-week uh, unit. But here's an example of an understanding, and I tend to think of it in two parts. Here I have an example. English language learners were un will understand that true friendships require give and take. This is the first part of the understanding that, for me, relates more towards the topic and the the the. Yeah, the topic and the context. Okay, English language learners will understand that true friendships require give and take. Then the second part continues by having learners compare and contrast current and past friendships, a critique or evaluation using key vocabulary related to values and emotions. The second part of the understanding relates more to the skills or what you want your students to do. This relates more towards the language of the lesson. So again, the first part relates more towards the topic and the context. The second part relates more towards language. When drafting your understanding, refer to the variety of performance verbs categorized by the different facets. Okay, and again, the link can be found on this page in the show notes here. You can take a look at different performance verbs to get some ideas about what you can include in when you're uh, in your own lesson. Here I just have a note trying to distinguish to give you some ideas about distinguishing between a notion and a function. Again, you can get more details if you take a look at this page called Notional and Functional Syllabus. All right, now the teaching techniques and strategies relates more towards now what you will do as the instructor. What kind of techniques and strategies will you employ in your lesson to help students meet the learning objective? The learning strategies are more related to what the learners themselves will do. Now, there, there could be some overlap here between teaching techniques and strategies and learning strategies, depending on to the extent of what the instructor, the language instructor, what you are doing in your class. For example, you might help learners create a Venn diagram to compare and contrast two ideas. And so if you're asking your students to create a Venn diagram and your students are creating a Venn diagram to prepare for, let's say, talking about two different cities, to compare and contrast two different cities, then this would fall under the category of a learning strategy if the students themselves are using this Venn diagram to help prepare and brainstorm and put some ideas together about what they want to talk about. 
Now you could also, as a teacher, create a Venn diagram to illustrate or to, <clears throat> to talk about a comparison or to compare and contrast certain things in class. This would fall more towards a teaching technique or strategy where you are, impl you are using a Venn diagram to help prove a point. So if you're showing students what a Venn diagram is and you're illustrating as an example with the idea that you want your students to create their own Venn diagram, then there's some overlap here. This, is, this would be an example of kind of an overlap between teaching techniques and strategies versus a learning strategy. But either way, think of a strategy as something that someone does to improve a particular skill set whether it's the teacher or the student. And there should be a lot of strategies between the teacher and the students that are going on in the moment of any particular class. A lot of strategies should be present in your class, whether, again, it falls on you, the teacher, the instructor, or your English language learners. <clears throat> All right, so moving on here, we have our time allocation how long will the, le the lesson last the teacher's name the observer's name if someone is recording your class who's going to record the class and the rationale now the rationale should relate to the theoretical concepts or the theoretical uh, points that relate to what you're doing in class when i think of the rationale think of someone coming up to you and asking you why are you doing this particular thing or why are you having your students do a particular thing in your class it's like a justification how would you justify doing what what you're doing think of someone maybe a coordinator coming in and observing your class how would you explain yourself maybe you're going to a job interview and you're asking you're asked you know, what makes a good class? Like, what do you do in your class? Why do you do certain things in your class? So rationale relates to the theoretical aspects, the justification, the support from theory that relates to what you're doing in class. If you are familiar with creating an educational philosophy, it relates very much to your educational philosophy. This is more related to a particular lesson, but it it really reflects what your philosophy is on teaching and learning. Materials and technologies, so I think this is obvious. Uh, just list out the materials and technologies that you plan to use in your class. Now assessment, I've placed assessment here and ideally if you're going to use a backward design, assessment actually is something that you think about first before you think about the actual instruction but here think of different ways that you're going to be assessing whether it's formative assessment that focuses more on learning versus summative assessment which focuses more on measuring what students have learned from the past to to the present here we have the procedure so here you'll include the different phases or stages or activities that you plan for your class, maybe even tasks. If you're following a task-based approach, you'll list the individual tasks. This can also be reflected in terms of activation, scaffolding, maybe would be part of the early stages. You have some kind of uh, activities uh, that you're using as you're employing or implementing your ta your the main tasks of your class. And then maybe some kind of closure or final activity that maybe summarizes the class or reviews what the learning goals were for that particular lesson. But this is where you'll have your procedure. And I would include also an approximate time allocation for each of these so you can kind of plan uh, ahead to see how much time you're anticipating for each of the phases. And I would also include interactive or interactional or interactive patterns that you're expecting. Are our students going to be working individually in pairs, small groups, or whole group? Are you going to be addressing your group as the instructor to the whole group, one to many? Or are students going to be working more um, on their own independently? 
have a section here on differentiation so you can differentiate the content the process the product maybe even the learning environment what level of choice will you give your students this can be also reflected in your differentiation uh, in this section now as an alternative instead of having diff some kind of mention of differentiation here in this part this could also very much relate to the rationale at the top so you could i could see uh, including some mention of differentiation within your rationale here at the at the top. All right, so we have our procedure, differentiation, anticipated issues. So what kind of problems are you anticipating for that particular lesson? And then we have the reflection, which again would be completed after the lesson. So I hope this helps breaking down the different components of lesson plan what i would try to include in each of your lesson plan paying very close attention to alignment that is making sure that the topic actually everything that the subject the grade level topic context grammar function grammar focus examples of the language key vocabulary learning objective teaching techniques learning strategies that these all align they all come together for common purpose all right so uh, I'll leave it there. If anyone wants me to take a look at your lesson, let me know. And um, this will be things we'll be talking about for the entire semester. Alignment, bringing together these aspects or components of a lesson plan.